welcome back so in this lecture we are going to discuss about the wireless sensor networks so the content we are going to discuss is introduction applications of wireless sensor networks and what is micro sensor network technology characteristics challenges and some factors which are influencing wireless sensor networks some comparisons among the various technologies and mac protocols and what is the scope of research we are going to have in wireless sensor networks so as an introduction before uh, going to wireless sensor networks so these sensor networks comes under which category in general these wireless technologies are divided into various categories like wireless wan which consisting of gsm 3g 4g etc wireless local area network which consisting of all 802.11 uh, standard just like uh, whatever it is li-fi wi-fi and gi-fi like this and wireless metropolitan area networks comes under 802.16 so the example for this is uh, wimax so it may work up to few kilometers wireless personal area network all these are comes under 802.15.4 and 15.1 so the examples for this are Bluetooth, Zigbee, Ultra Wideband, and the maximum uh, transmission capacity was 20 to 250 kbps depending on the technology we are using and depending on the distance we are going to transmit. So as an introduction to wireless sensor networks, so it is a collection of uh, devices which are to be sensed that can communicate without any uh, physical connection between the nodes. So these devices are can sense and which will process as well as communicate with its peers. So we can uh, whatever the centralized collection point uh, we can call it as sync or base station. And these uh, networks are the highly distributed networks of small as well as lightweight wireless nodes deployed in large numbers to monitor the environmental systems. So each node of the sensor node consisting of three subsystems. So you can call it as sensor subsystem, which is used to sense and processing subsystem, which will perform all the computations, all the operations which are to be performed by the processing subsystem. Communication subsystem is to exchange the data between sender and receiver. The major features of this sensor node are the limited uh, sensing region and processing power energy so if we consider the whatever the sensor node which is displayed here this will consisting of a sensing node which is having three basic components so which are called as cpu radio transceiver as well as sensors array so any kind of sensor interfaced through adc here adc is nothing but adaptive low power digital converter so nodes are in general these nodes are battery powered and we have a facility of onboard storage as well as we may have accurators in this particular sensor node so the advantages of sensor nodes are they may be reliable robust accurate and fault tolerant Whatever the sensor nodes networks we have, that sensor nodes majorly perform two operations. They are called data dissemination and data gathering. So there are depending on the type of sensor or depending on the requirement, we are using several categories of sensors. The sensors may be seismic sensor, thermal sensor, visual sensor and infrared sensor. So if we uh, consider the applications, so when we are establishing a sensor uh, network, we need to have collection of sensors, which will uh, use it to, which will act as a transducer and which will convert the physical phenomena just like a, a heat, motion, vibration and sound into electrical signals. So these sensors are, uh, we can treat it as a node. This is a basic unit of sensor network, which will contain onboard sensors, processors, memories, transceivers, and power supply. 
So all these nodes are combined to form a sensor network which will consisting of large number of sensor nodes and deployed either inside or very close to sensed phenomena. So there are several real time examples. So if you consider the applications one by one, military applications, so which are uh, mainly used for battlefield surveillance and targeting the uh, opponents as well as nuclear, biological, chemical attack detection. In these cases, we can use the sensors in military applications. The second application we have is environmental applications just like forest fire detection and flood detections, precision agriculture, air and water pollution. To measure these uh, quantities, it is possible to use the sensor networks. So if it comes to health applications, so uh, if in some cases remote areas it is not possible to have a very uh, good or eminent doctor. In that case, with the help of telemedicine, so it is possible to know uh, the uh, health condition of that particular patient by the doctor. At the same time, it is also possible to have drug administration in hospitals. Another home and office applications as usual we know. So nowadays every home is trying to automate. So in this automation, the sensors are playing a vital role in uh, operating remotely. Automotive applications. So instead of uh, having multiple cables to establish connections in between chambers as well as some uh, mechanical parts, so if we integrate that connections with the sensor, it is possible to know the complete condition of that particular vehicle. And in case of other commercial applications also, it is possible to use in interactive museums and any thefts are there, managing inventory control, vehicle tracking and detection. And this is one real time example of uh, uh, wireless sensor networks which is implemented in Kenya we can call this as ZebraNet project so the, what they, they, they did is they integrate one sensor uh, for each and every zebra so that they came to know the movement of that particular zebra and another application of wireless sensor network is these sensors some sensors can have uh, capability to work under the water also and uh, this is another real time example Intel wireless vineyard so in this case for every tree they uh, connected with one sensor so the sensor will monitor the conditions of that particular uh, tree whether sufficient water is uh, 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 giving to that particular tree or whether the fruit is uh, healthy or any some damage is out there that can be monitored by the <coughs> sorry monitored by the sensors and wildlife habitat monitoring in this case also it is possible to have so if any bird uh, calls that sound was detected by the microphone and from the microphone the sensor will sense the camera camera will capture the picture like that so we can uh, it is possible to know the moment of birds so other than this uh, wireless sensor network, we have another uh, two categories called micro sensor network technology as well as nano sensor network technology. So the very small chip which will cover a small amount of area like millimeter square to inch square. So if 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 we if you want to cover this much a small amount of size, then it is possible to have micro sensor network technology. So in this case multiple uh, sensors for light temperature humidity and imaging etc we can use and uh, it, it may have some considerable amount of uh, processing power and positional ability from gps or local methods and which can be deployed in very small or very uh, uh, large quantities so depending on our requirement we may have any number of uh, the quantities of sensors so if we come to characteristics of wireless sensor networks these are uh, uh, ma the major characteristics are low power limited memory energy constraint due to the small uh, size 
so which can all be deployed in extreme environmental conditions like up to 75 degrees fahrenheit fahrenheit centigrade also these are these are sensors are capable to work and once we deploy the net uh, sensors at the time of initiation only there is a need of intervention by the human so once these are deployed there is no human intervention is required directly they will itself the self organized uh, uh they having the capacity to organize self so there are as we said now depending on our requirement we may have the several kinds of sensors so these are uh, one sensor called world sense sensor node crossbow sensor node and berkeley sensor node and ucla rockwell jpl these are the various sensors uh, nodes we have So, if it comes to the node hardware, the hardware consisting of many parts. But when we are going to design this particular hardware, we need to have we have some several challenges like uh, design challenges. These are heterogeneity, distributed processing, low bandwidth communication, large scale coordination, utilization of sensors, real time computation. These are the major design challenges when we are going to design a sensor network. at the same time we have some operational challenges like energy efficiency limited storage as we have no the sensors are having very limited uh, uh, storage capacity at the same time low bandwidth and in these errors are very common and scalability issues are there survivability issues are there in a very harsh environments and uh, these uh, experiments are time and space intensives so as we have nanotechnology which is the extreme size of 10 power minus 9 meters that means 1 billionth of a meter and these nano sensors are capable of detecting and responding to physical uh, uh, stimulations characterized as nano structured particles nano particles uh, or, or nano devices so these uh, are based on nano electrical mechanical systems simply we can call it as nems so whatever the future products we are going to get that products are be uh, integrated with nano technology uh, system so <clears throat> so if you consider the hardware which may have the sensing unit processing unit transceiver unit power unit and location finding system <coughs> power generator mobilizer so the mobilizer may be optional to move the node from one location to another location so, so like uh, others wireless sensor networks is also having the protocol stack the physical layer to application layer file layers and these uh, some protocols are used to manage and some protocols are used to uh, dissemination and some protocols are used to uh, detecting some tasks and all these are comes under 802.15.4 ieee standard 802.15.4 and these provides the software operations needed to perform administrative tasks that is moving sensor nodes turning uh, on as well as off so when the data is transmitted the pro which uh, provides user applications which interfaces to issue queries as well as uh, respond to queries questioning as well as answering sensor query and tasks language we can uh, call it as sqtl so based on these uh, uh, query language these sensor uh, sensors are able to communicate with each other so next uh, the topic is comparison between cellular and ad hoc wireless network so as we know these are cellular networks are we need to have fixed infrastructure in the case of ad hoc wireless networks there is no infrastructure is required and in this centralized duty and in ad hoc networks we have distributed duty and it is high cost and time uh, for uh, deployment and it is within a short span we it is possible to establish likewise some comparisons are there 
and network maintenance also cellular networks need high cost to maintain whereas ad hoc networks are self organizing as well as maintenance properties are built into that particular network and in cellular network mobile hosts are relatively low complexity and here it requires more intelligence to operate so in cellular networks these are widely deployed and currently in the third generation of evolution and in ad hoc networks there are several issues are to be addressed for successful commercial deployment even though uh, the, uh, the widespread use the existing in defense again some differences between wireless sensor networks and ad hoc networks so the sen- uh, sensor nodes are more easy to failure and energy drain and their battery sources are usually not replicable or rechargeable and as we know the sensor nodes may not have unique global identification so unique addressing is not always feasible in sensor networks wireless sensor networks broadcast but ad hoc networks point to point communication the topology of sensor networks change very frequently and the sensor nodes may not have global identification the sensor networks are data centric the queries in sensor networks are addressed in addressed to uh, the nodes which have data satisfying some conditions whereas ad hoc networks are address centric these are not data centric these are address centric so which queries address to the particular nodes specified by their unique address data diffusion and aggregation in sensor nodes no, uh, these uh, aggregate the local information before relaying the goals are reduced to bandwidth consumption media access delay and power consumption for communication there are some issues as well as challenges in designing a sensor network so a sensor node uh, should also be uh, capable of adapting to changing connectivity due to the failure of nodes or a node powering up the routing protocol should be able to dynamically include or avoid sensor nodes in their paths so as we know the sensor networks are infrastructureless therefore all routing and maintenance algorithms need to be distributed and real time communication over a sensor networks must be supported through provision of guarantees on the maximum delay minimum bandwidth or other quality of service parameters the sensor node should be able to synchronize with each other in a completely distributed manner so that tdma schedules can be imposed so the provision must be made for secure communication over a sensor networks especially for military applications which carry a very sensitive data so if we come to the architecture basically we have uh, three uh, types of architectures are there in wireless sensor networks one is distributed second one is hierarchical and third one is clustered so in di- distributed as well as hierarchical can be represented as the layered architecture and in cluster so each uh, the total set of uh, sensor nodes are divided into clusters and one node is maintained as the cluster head which will be treated as a cluster head in that particular cluster so this cluster head will use it to uh, usually maintains the remaining nodes information when the data is transmitted from one cluster to another cluster <coughs> so data centric routing as we know the sensor networks are data centric routing uh, routing uh, approach it will use so in data centric routing it will first find the nodes which are interested to transmit so tasks to each and every sensor node first it will uh, sync will broadcast the interest and sensor nodes broadcast an advertisement for available data and which requires attribute based naming so aggregation means when the data is coming from multiple sensor nodes are aggregated if they are about the same attribute uh, of the phenomena when they reach the same routing node on the way back to the sink so with the help of data aggregation it is possible to solve the implosion as well as overlap problem 
at the same time energy efficient approach this one dissemination means transmission of data so in general the node that generates the data is called source and the information to be reported is called event and a node which is interested in that particular event is called sync so this is uh, uh, when the data uh, is transmitted uh, by the multiple sensor nodes so the data collected by the sensor node has to be communicated to the node which is interested in that particular data so in data dissemination there are majorly two uh, steps are performed one is interest propagation and data dissemination so in interest propagation for every event that a sync is interested in it broadcasts its interest to its neighbor and across the network dissemination means when an event is detected it is reported to that particular uh, uh, node is interested to transmit data dissemination with the help of flooding so each node which receives a packet in turns in broadcast it's if the maximum hope count of the packet is not reached if the node itself is not the destination of the particular packet so if the node is uh, uh, itself is a destination and doesn't transmit otherwise it will transmit so we have several disadvantages like implosion overlapping and resource blinding that means when the duplicate messages are sent uh, to that particular same node this occurs when the node receives copies of same messages from many of its neighbors and overlapping means when the same event may be sensed by more than one node due to overlapping regions of uh, coverage so this may leads to the problem of overlapping and resource blindness in the sense without considering the energy available or without considering the bandwidth available it will uh, try to transmit the data to its destination gossiping means it is a modified uh, version of flooding and the nodes do not uh, broadcast a packet but it sends to randomly selected neighbor so instead of sending uh, uh, to all neighbors it will select some neighbors for that neighbors only it will select it will uh, transmit so so that avoid the problem of implosion and it takes long time for a message to propagate throughout the network why because simply instead of random uh, ra instead of uh, broadcasting to all it will send to the selected but nodes only so it does not guarantee all the nodes of network will receive that uh, whatever the message we are transmitting and in dissemination we have another called rumor routing and this is uh, an agent based uh, path creation algorithm so it circulated in the network to establish shortest path to events that they are encountered and agent is a long live packet created at random by the nodes and it will die after visiting k hopes it will count based on the hope count after reaching the maximum count it will die when an agent finds a node whose path is to event uh, to an event is lo uh, longer than its own it updates the node routing table and data gathering <coughs> So in data gathering, the main uh, concern in data gathering is to transmit the sensor data from each sensor node to a base station. So the main goal is to maximize the lifetime of the network. Minimum energy should be consumed, and the transmission occur with minimum delay. Direct transmission. So when the nodes transmit their data directly to the base station it costs expensive when sensor nodes is very far from the base station up to certain level only they will transmit so if it is more distance then these uh, nodes are unable to uh, they are not capable to transmit the to to uh, data to the base station so nodes must take turns while transmitting the base station to avoid collision so media access delay is also a very large hence this scheme performs poorly with respect to the energy uh, 
cross delay metric. So we'll consider some MAC protocols for uh, wireless sensor network. So the challenge is posed to buy sensor network MAC protocol. So there is no single controller controlling authority. So global synchronization is difficult. And power efficiency issues, frequent topology changes due to mobility. And there are three kinds of MAC protocols used in sensor network based on the availability. So they are categorized as fixed allocation, demand based, contention based. So in fixed allocation uh, is meant uh, in general, it will share the common medium through predetermined assignment. So it is suitable for sensor network that uh, continuously monitor and generate deterministic data traffic and provide a bounded delay for each and every node. In, anyway, however, so in the case of bursty traffic where the channel requirements of each node may vary over time and it may lead to inefficient usage of that particular channel. And in the case of second category called uh, demand based, so in, in demand based used in, uh, in such cases where the channel is allocated according to the demand of the particular node. So variable rate traffic can be efficiently transmitted, require the additional overhead of reservation process. So contention based MAC protocols. So in this category of protocols, random access based contention for the channel when packets needs to be transmitted, suitable for busty traffic and collisions, no uh, delay guarantees are not suitable for delay sensitive and real time traffic. MAC protocols. So these uh, due to oh, we can uh, simply call that as so due to the self organizing of uh, these MAC protocols. So when wireless sensor networks are designed to operate a long time as it is rather impractical or uh, replenish the batteries. However, the nodes are in ideal state for most of the time when no sensing occurs ultimately. So measurements have shown that typical radio consumes similar level of energy in ideal mode as the receiving mode. Therefore, it is important that nodes are able to operate in low duty cycles. Self-organizing MACs for sensor networks and EAR are the two protocols which handle network initialization and mobility support. So in the case of uh, MAC layer, the, uh, the protocols at MAC layer, so these the MAC and routing layers are the most active research areas in wireless sensor networks. These two are the very active research areas. So there are two types of schemes available to allocate single broadcast channel among the competing nodes that is static channel allocation as well as dynamic allocation. So in static uh, channel allocation in, uh, in this category of protocols if there are n sensor networks the bandwidth is divided into n equal portions uh, in frequency called FDMA in time TDMA, in code CDMA and in space SDMA or in schemes such as OFDM or ultra wideband and since each sensor network is assigned uh, a, a private portion there is no or minimal interface against the multiple sensor networks. So in the case of dynamic channel location there is no fixed assignment of bandwidth when the number of active sensors uh, changes dynamically, the data becomes busty and arbitrary sensors. So it is most advisable to use dynamic channel allocation scheme. So in the next uh, uh, series of lecture, we will discuss what are the major protocols, routing protocols as well as sensor MAC protocols we have uh, in uh, wireless sensor networks we will discuss.